I touched on this briefly in the introduction, but one of the main skills that you need to have during VCE is balancing your study life and everything else outside of that. And the main reason for that is simply to keep your sanity. Think of year 12 like a marathon, not a sprint. Of course, you need to focus on your studies, but you still need to balance your study time with friends, family, your social life, your sleep, and so many other factors that probably a lot of students don't think about on a day-to-day -day basis. For myself, one of the main things that I did, and one thing that I tell all of my students and even my younger brothers, is keep your part-time job. For myself personally, I only worked one to two shifts per week during year 12, but this was something that helped me down the track when I didn't think it would. One thing that I actually developed the most when working part-time while studying was my organizational skills. Of course, shifts are scheduled and you have to work around them. And having that schedule and having that time where I knew I couldn't study, I had to work my studies around it. So for example, if I knew I was working, let's say Thursday and Saturday, then I know I couldn't study as much on Thursday and Saturdays, but I had to compensate, let's say on Wednesdays or Fridays or something like that. In hindsight, I can see the benefit that that played to me now because now my organizational skills are honestly a lot better compared to before I started working during year 12. So having those skills and those fundamentals built during year 12 actually helps you a lot later in life. And I know that probably goes beyond VCE for a lot of you and a lot of you just worried about VCE and VC methods specifically, but it's something important to think about because eventually you're going to have to start balancing things. You're going to have a family of your own or you're going to have a job in the future and you want to you know, go out with friends and socialize outside. Of course, you need organizational skills eventually. So it, why not just balance it now? I literally hear so many people say, oh, I'm going to give up my part-time work to focus on VC more. I've heard a hundred times from my students, from my brothers, it doesn't matter who it's from. I, I, all the time, I just think there's so many other better options for you. I understand dialing back work in year 12 because you want to focus on your studies and whatnot, and that's perfectly fine. But to give it up completely, let, let's just take an example. Let's say someone works 10 hours and they stop working completely during year 12 because, you know, they want to focus on their studies perfectly fine in theory, except that person is not going to be spending that 10 hours as productively and as efficiently as possible. You can't tell me that that person is improving their life and improving their studies 10 hours worth just by quitting their job. 100% they're going to be scrolling TikTok, scrolling Instagram with most of that time. They might study one or two hours extra, but they could have done that anyway. They could have found the time elsewhere. I don't think quitting your job is the answer and the solution to your problems in VCA. That was a bit of a negative part to the video, but that's okay. We'll pick it up with the next benefit of working during um, during VCE, and it's a really obvious benefit. It's the ability to make money. Now, you might not see that as important. Your parents might be rich. You you know you might be well off already. You might have a lot of saved in the bank, but who doesn't want extra money, right? Let's say you have roughly 50 weeks in the year. Take out towards exam period. You're left with maybe 40 weeks. You make on average, let's say, $200 a week. 400 or 40 multiplied by 200 is $8,000. At the end of the year, you're left with $8,000 and all you did was manage your time better so you could fit in part-time work. So, you know, who wouldn't take $8,000 if they couldn't? The third benefit is something that I experienced personally and I'm not sure if a lot of other people experience this, but I'm just going to say it anyway. I actually found part-time work as kind of a break. Uh, might sound a bit weird because, you know, sometimes work can be pretty uh, intensive and pretty mentally exhausting, but... For my part-time job personally during VCE, it was just a, a mere cafe worker. So pretty chill, get to talk to co-workers, get to talk to customers. And, you know, honestly, it's a bit of a mental break from uh, the studying that I did during the week. And honestly, I really enjoyed it and I really loved it. So uh, I wouldn't have it any other way during VCE. I would say, well, I'm pretty biased, <laughs> but I would say that's, a, that's an ideal job to have because it's not too intense. At the same time, you get to improve your communication skills and talking to new people. You know, who doesn't want that? So if you want my recommendation, I would say any job that's not too mentally or physically exhausting. So that first example, cafe worker, another one working in a supermarket or working in retail. I feel like those jobs are not too exhausting, but at the same time, you're still communicating with people and it's kind of a mental break from VCA. If you'd like my personal recommendation, what I would say is limit yourself to 10 to 15 hours of part-time work per week and dial this back and keep it dynamic where necessary. So for example, if you're leading up to a sack, you kind of don't want to work in that period leading up to a sack. And same as exams, you don't want to work you know, leading up to exams and during that exam period because it's just going to stress you out. So for me personally, what I did is I would cancel any shifts or 
swap any shifts that I had a couple of days leading up to sacks. So sp specifically for me, that was kind of like a two-day rule that I had developed for myself personally. I kind of heard it just from a friend and I just took it on board. So if it's within two days of a sack, I'm not going to work that shift. And for exam period, I kind of stopped working up until a month before my first exam. So the first exam was probably my... Uh, Italian exam, which was mid-October or so, so I stopped working about early October or late this, late September, so that was kind of my rule for um, working during VCE. The next thing I'm going to discuss is hobbies. One of the main hobbies that people have is usually playing sport. Now, the beauty of playing sport is that most of the time it's going to be scheduled, especially if you play for a club of some sort. So for me personally, this sport was soccer, and I continue to play soccer all the way till the end of year 12, and again, I don't regret this decision at all. The great thing about soccer was that it was all scheduled. So you had two training sessions per week and then one game on Sundays. And this was perfect for me because I knew, you know, a week out, a month out, what my schedule was going to look like for, you know, soccer. So I could schedule my studies around that. And let's say, you know, let's say if I had a sack, I had a sack on Wednesday, but I had training on Tuesday. I most likely just not attend training and the coach would understand. They're not going to take it too personally if, you know, they understand that you're doing VCE and you want to focus on that, especially if it's, you know, one day out from your sack. So um, just keep in mind that, you know, it's not the be all and end all, trying to impress uh, your coach or um, commit to anything. But I would still recommend keeping that on board. So let's say it's maybe eight to 10 hours a week. I think mine was about 10 hours per week. Um, I think it's worth keeping your sport because obviously you're keeping your mental sanity by playing it. You're keeping your, you know, your active, your activity up, your physical activity up, which is also a benefit. So, you know, whether you have, you know, organized sport or you go to the gym or you do running, just keep doing it. There's no harm in doing it. You can make up that time in other places. The last thing that I'm going to discuss is family. Our family is very family oriented and that's probably because we come from a European background and it's pretty traditional. Um... Yeah, I totally agree with the fact that, uh, you know, you should have time for family and those memories that you're going to cherish uh, forever. So I wouldn't say that you need to just stop <laughs> interacting with family uh, throughout the whole of year 12, but there's definitely a balance that comes into play. And you might, you you probably see this theme reoccurring in what I've been saying. Everything is about balance. And it's, you know, it's not, it's not like a stereotype or cliche. It's actually true. And it's about finding that balance that just works for you. So I'll give you an example. Um, my family would always visit one of the grandparents every weekend. And obviously, you know, if you're doing that once a week, it's like a five to six hour thing. And it's just, you know, continuously happening. Obviously, with everything else happening in your life, it's not very feasible to do that every week. So what I, I had an agreement where I would, not really an agreement. Honestly, it was just like I just came once every two weeks instead of once every week. And it's just about communicating that you need that balance and you need that time to study. And you know, 99% of parents would understand, you know, they're probably encouraging, <laughs> they're going to be encouraging you to study more. So uh, yeah, just take that opportunity and just communicate it with them. And, you know, if they, if they disagree, that's fine. Honestly, what I would do is I'll just do it anyway. I'll just not come and just go you know, when you feel it's necessary. Um, but yeah, obviously everyone's family situation is different. So you just have to uh, play your cards accordingly. Just to touch on the previous point, what I kind of meant is that families sometimes fall into one of two categories. The first one is that, you know, when you're when you're studying and when you're in year 12, they kind of want you to go to all of the family events. And, you know, obviously that is very uh, detrimental to your studies because you're taking a lot of time away from your studies consistently. The other type is on the other end of the spectrum where they don't want you to come at all. I think um, it makes sense why parents might think this is the best thing to do and it's because you know obviously they want you to spend more time in your studies but you just need to tell them hey you know i don't need all that time i can still come come along tag along with you guys to see family once in a while and you know i'm sure you know they're not going to be uh disappointed with you if you do come along and you skip out studies for a few hours but as long as you make up that time elsewhere i think they'll be uh, more than okay with it so my general recommendation for going out for family events and gatherings like that is maybe just halve the numbers that you do. You're still going to, you know, experience those things that you can't get that time back for. Um, but, you know, obviously you need more time to study. So uh, that's one thing that you can uh, save a lot of time with. When it comes to leading up to sacks and exams period, it kind of the same as work situation. Don't 
do anything that takes up too much time or too much mental capacity a couple of days out from sex. And when it comes to the exam period, maybe about a month or a few weeks out, just like stop going to them altogether so you could just dial in and focus on your exams. Some big ideas that are omitted from this video are namely sleep and social life. And that's because these are pretty big topics that I kind of want to discuss in more detail in separate dedicated videos. So scroll down to have a look at those.